The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy, responding to fears that the U.S. was trailing the Soviet Union in space exploration, committed the nation to reaching the moon within a decade. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. The Apollo program was born. This massive national undertaking resulted in six successful lunar landings. Neil Armstrong commanded the Apollo 11 mission, which first landed men on the moon 50 years ago on July 20th, 1969. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. When Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, he relied on a critical piece of technology, his spacesuit. His suit became an icon of the human ingenuity and achievement. To remember his moments in human history, he, Lazy Dog Typewriters, have chosen to customize another piece piece of iconic 1960s technology. The Brother JP-1 typewriter. Just a bit smaller than the Saturn V, the JP-1 was in some ways just as powerful as an engine for creativity and productivity. To paraphrase President Kennedy, we chose to repaint it. Not because it would be easy, but because it would be cool. Howdy folks. It's great whenever you can combine multiple interests and passions to create something altogether new. With this custom painted Brother JP-1, we've been able to combine a love of space exploration with a love of typewriters. Let's explore this machine. As you can see, We've painted a standard JP-1, which comes in a kind of a drab blue color, into a much more vibrant, bright white with red and blue accents to hopefully resemble, or at least give you an idea of what the Apollo spacesuits were, were made of, what they look like. So we've got the red anodized aluminum color, and then also a blue anodized aluminum, and then the shockingly white bright <clears throat> Uh, of the Apollo spacesuits. One of the innovations and improvements that the Apollo 11 spacesuit or the Apollo program spacesuit made over the early Gemini spacesuits was they were much more uh, mobile and flexible uh, and they had much better cooling system. They were water cooled for the, uh, the astronauts comfort and to pr actually protect their lives whereas the Gemini suits had just had an air blown fan and what they experienced when the first Gemini astronauts were doing their spacewalks uh, and their space flights was they got extremely hot and the, the astronauts were getting exhausted and their visors were fogging up. So uh, NASA went to work on the drum from scratch in the 1960s. They had nothing ready to go to get to the moon when President Kennedy challenged them to get to the moon and back within the decade. And one of the major advancements they had was to create these spacesuits, which in a way were essentially spaceships because they had to support all life uh, outside of a spacecraft. So they really were amazing marvels of technology. And in many ways, maybe lesser ways we'll say, this Brother JP-1 is a marvel of technology. So let's go ahead and go over the features, starting out with the keyboard. As you may notice, there is no dedicated one key in this machine. This was a machine made in 1965 and that was altogether common and uh, normal. And so some of you may be wondering, well, how did, you, how did you type without a number one? Katie, how did folks make the letter of a number one back in the 1960s? With the L key. That's right, 
they push the lowercase l key and that's how you would make uh, number one. And Kevin, what about an exclamation point? If you wanted to be emphatic about something, what'd you have to do? You'd really have to want it. You'd have to type in the period key, then the backspace, which is over here for some reason, and then you would have to push, press shift, then go over where, wherever the asterisk was. That's right. So you, the shift and the eight key. And Kevin brings up a good point. Um, Besides the overall idea that not all keyboards were standardized or that they weren't standardized, uh, there are a lot of variations sometimes that can throw you off when you move between typewriters. And one of the things, as we'll lift the view up here, the, uh, this key with a double arrow on it is sometimes labeled MR, that's your margin release key. Sometimes that's on the right side of the keyboard and sometimes it's on the left. Similarly, the backspace key, which is the appropriate backwards facing arrow, is also sometimes on the other side of the keyboard and some Olympias come to mind uh, with that and I can uh, I can attest to the many times I push the wrong key when you're trying to use a new typewriter so it's just one of those little quirks that you got to get used to it is a carriage shifted machine so if you want to uh, shift to upper case you have to press your shift and your shift lock here and the carriage itself elevates as opposed to the basket of the typewriter and that's a perfectly functional system it's very common um, but later on, people uh, were much more uh, inclined to use the basket shift, where the whole basket or segment would go down instead of having to use the force to raise the carriage. It's just a little bit of a mechanically easier uh, system on your hands, but very productive. Okay, so moving on, we have our ribbon cover here on this JP1, and it's a nice metal case, as you can see. We've obviously customized it. Um, it connects into the frame via these a little plunger uh, connects bayonet points and just while we're at it we'll go over some of the things we've done besides painting this typewriter it's altogether too common for these JP1's to have a little bit of a rattly mechanical sound and some of that is due just to the design but uh, other parts of it are due to the fact that you have uh, rubber bumper pieces which have corroded over time and so what we're looking at right here is a brand new replacement rubber bumper that I've put on all of these uh, corner tab connection pieces and that really dramatically reduces the sound so if you have a brother typewriter or really any typewriter you want to check out all these connections because they will inevitably have deteriorated over time if they have not been maintained and one of the other things you can see that helps with that is these rubber grommets right here are also routinely completely corroded and crumbling whenever you lift off that lid and they'll just fall to pieces on you. So if you replace them with new rubber grommets, you'll get a great, uh, great experience using them. When you receive these machines, they're almost always in really dusty, dirty, horrible shape. But I have yet to ever encounter a brother, knock on wood, that didn't just type like a dream as soon as you just did some very basic maintenance. It's just a testimony to the quality construction of these machines. So, less of a pay into Brother Manufacturing and more to an overview. We have, here we have your paper uh, bale, which is a very simple a mechanical device. It's got these nice little finger tabs, which help you catch them with your left or your right hand when you want to use it. Um, you have your margin selectors, which you, how do you move the margins there, Kevin? You have to push them down. You push them down and then you slide them. Mm. That's right, you've got a helpful scale to tell you where your margin will be. And if you want to change the uh, spacing on your typewriter, Katie, what do you do? Well, you move the <laughs> ribbon the line selector switch here as three positions, one, one and a half, and two. And then you have sort of this mystery position, which is the R, which stands for release, I believe, which will allow you to roll the platen smoothly. And one of the reasons why you'd want to do that is because if you're filling out forms or any kind of a piece of paper that has lines on it, something you need to get your uh, characters aligned directly onto, if you hit the release, you'll take care of, you'll remove the indexing and you'll be able to just go precisely where you want things to go. So, common feature. Now, some Brother JP1s, and again, the Brother JP1 is kind of the uh, vanilla typewriter it came in so many different formats and was rebranded and sold by so many different companies like Montgomery Ward and others but brother in this particular example put their own uh, name on it and we can take try to zoom in on that badge back here which is the brother industries tab and if you can make that out you can see it's L589 etc 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 
And uh, the L character stands for the month, and it escapes your mind the later half of the month. And then the five is the second digit of the decade in which it was manufactured. Made in Japan. Made in Japan, of course, which uh, back in the 60s was something that might have been seen as a little bit questionable as Japan rebuilt its industrial base. But we know today now that they were just supreme, um, supreme, techno not technology, but supreme, um, supremely devoted to quality. Much like their cars were later on known to be the Datsuns and the Toyotas that came out of Japan, these machines, these brother JP1s, just really have stood the test of time. Simple, straightforward manufacturing and great to type on. So we'll finalizing the control overviews. On the right hand side of the carriage you can see what looks to be a little lever that lifts up and that will be how you can lock the carriage. Your carriage release knob here will abut that and it will help lock your carriage in place when you have lifted it up and that will secure your we get it to go. That will secure your carriage for when you put it back into your case for storage and moving it. One nice thing also about this machine is the uh, carriage return lever will fold away safely and some great advice from typewriter minutes and others is to put some bubble wrap which I have not yet done onto this carriage return arm so that you don't scratch your newly custom painted Apollo spaceship spacesuit design looking typewriter. That would be bad. That would be bad. This machine actually came to us with its original or at least vintage metal spools, uh, which are ribbon spools, which are held, the ribbon is held in place by these handy levers, which you would remove uh, when, or hold back when you're removing and changing the ribbon. Now some of the, of the brother uh, typewriters have the tab, but this, and uh, later on they added the one key, but this particular variant does not have a tab, so there's no way to do a tab other than the old fashioned way of just using the keyboard to space things over, which for the most part of how we're using our typewriters today for correspondence or writing novels or any kind of a general writing and less more of an accounting machine uh, works just fine. A word on some of the other uh, strange openings and orifices on this, on this typewriter. If you're wondering what is this all about, you have these different, uh, different openings. Those are not HDMI ports as some might suspect, but they are actually slots into which the typewriter can fit into its case and it will lock into there. So that's what those openings are for. And this machine came to us without a case, unfortunately. Um, so I don't have a case to customize, but I'm considering taking another case from my collection and, uh, and fitting this into it. And in, in a minute I'll show you uh, what a standard Brother JP1 looks like so we can do a comparison of uh, what a, a stock JP1 looks like versus what this customized one now looks like. The Brother typewriters come from a rather large family and we have three siblings right here. We thought we'd give you just a quick flyby. These are all brothers, JP1 variants, and we'll start off with another customized one. It's a, a label is a Webster, thank you Katie, a Webster typewriter. This came in that same standard blue, but we decided to jazz it up a little bit and we have painted it red and we'll give you an overview of that in a later video. And then we have over here another which is the same brother model. I wanted to give you this one. This is a sample of one that we haven't, re haven't uh, fixed up yet, so you've got your standard scuffs and scrapes and the keyboard, which is a little bit damaged. It's missing, which is kind of rare. It used to be a parent's sticker here. Almost all these brother heads are commended by Parents Magazine, uh, and that was stuck on with the most powerful adhesive known to man because they're almost always still there, or at least the ghost of their remnants. So that's what a standard brother JP one would look like and then we have another one that I really particularly like this is a Sears branded brother JP one and uh, this is another slightly more advanced model you can see they've added the touch control and also a ribbon color select to this model and we'll give you guys a look at that maybe if you're interested uh, in the future we can look at all these different variants and we'd love to hear from you in the comments about what you'd like to see first or if you have seen these particular variants, and there are still more in our collection that we could show you. Now for a typing test. So it's looking pretty sharp and it has a brand new blue and red ribbon. 
As I may have mentioned, this machine doesn't have a ribbon color selector switch, so you can only use the upper portion of the ribbon. But if you really want to, and you want to change colors, all you have to do is flip that ribbon over, and you can use the top or the bottom, the red or the blue or the red and the black, whatever color you happen to have. But I thought that this red and blue is a good combination for our overall color theme of our spacesuit of red and blue. One bit of unfinished business that we have with this customization project is we haven't put a mission patch on the typewriter yet and I'm kind of of two minds on this. I have permanently affixed uh, this NASA badge uh, but if I put a mission badge it really is exclusively to the Apollo 11 mission and of course that is perhaps the most famous, I think pretty decidedly is the most famous mission of all the Apollos despite all their epic importance and of course Neil Armstrong being the first man on the moon is obviously something can't be done again. So, But I am torn um, about the other patches. Of course Apollo 1 which was the disastrous mission which never got off the ground due to a terrible fire uh, which took the lives of the three astronauts Chisholm Chafee and White were killed in a, in a fire inside their capsule which led to a lot of improvements in the Apollo system and including a massive redo of the actual space suits to make them more fire uh, retardant and fire protective. But there was an oxygen, pure oxygen fire which burned out of control in a test and killed those astronauts um, before the Challenger disaster, the worst uh, disaster in the history of the space program. Uh, or we could do a more positive, I guess, the last mission. We have uh, Apollo 17 with Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt. That's a lot of uh, firsts. There was the first professional geologist. Instead of having test pilots and other uh, military uh, astronauts, we had a civilian who was a trained geologist, the only geologist on the moon, and that was Schmidt. Happened to be from New Mexico. as a recent trip to Albuquerque uh, informed us in the Museum of Natural History. Or maybe I could just put a standard uh, overall Apollo symbol on it. Anyway, we'd love to hear your feedback about whether this machine would be better if it was dedicated to a single um, mission like the Apollo 11 mission, which is my inclination, or if we should uh, should uh, leave it off or should uh, just put on a different badge altogether. Kevin is showing another one which would be interesting because it's the Apollo 20 um, mission, which was a mission which was canceled. There were about three Apollo missions which they had planned to do and for which they had materials, but which due to budget cost constraints were canceled in the 1970s. The U.S. economy wasn't doing that well. We were suffering from turmoil politically at home and uh, under Richard Nixon, and there just was not the political will anymore to continue. And that was something of a tragedy, but that reflects everything about space exploration in general. And this is less typewriter, I suppose, and more, more philosophy, but it's always a constant struggle and a balance to say, hey, should we put the needs of people here on Earth more, or does going into space help challenge and enlighten and then lift all of us, uh, lift all of us up by the exploration and discovery? So obviously I have my own opinion on that, and it's definitely pro-space, but um, it's things to think about as we consider these artifacts from history, this artifact from 1965, and this artifact here from 2019, this Lego kit, which commemorates that Apollo lunar landing. All right, we've put this brother JP-1 through its paces, and let's go back and check out what we like and what we didn't like so much. First of all, the brother, just like the Apollo mission program, the Saturn V and the Apollo command module and service module are utterly dependable. There is a relatively simple design, ease of use, extremely high reliability. Uh, it's really hard to beat these machines almost in whatever condition you find them in, filthy, beat up, they still just tend to type. The platens, for whatever reason, the rubber they used is still relatively soft when others of them, like Nakajima, which is a very similar manufacturer, they're almost always hard at the same time. So it's just an overall really good machine to have. Now, uh, we particularly like ours because it has a one-of-a-kind paint job. And uh, if we like it enough, we might make it a two or a three of a kind paint job as we try to work our way through the different Apollo missions, and we'd love your feedback on that. So, on cons, um, it has a simple feature set. So you don't have a dedicated number one key, you don't have a tab, and you don't have a ribbon color selector. You also don't have a touch control. Now, interestingly enough, uh, later brothers, just a few years later, um, had all these features, even in the same JP-1 layout. We also don't have a paper support. There are some JP-1s that do, 
but uh, ours does not have one. And uh, I don't find that uh, to be too much of a, uh, a negative, but it's definitely something to consider when you, when you evaluate these. So all in all, um, we think this is really just a one-of-a-kind, wonderful machine, and uh, we're really happy to have it. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again. Please like and subscribe. And go ahead and press that notification bell. Blast off.